So you just brought the game and you're not sure how to play it and you want to know exactly what to do. Well, you've come to the right place. I'm the South Sailor and welcome to my Age of Empires beginner's guide. So I'm going to assume you know how to use menus and things like that. I'm not going to go through that in too much detail, but let's get into the meat and the drink of it all and let's learn how to play the game. So I'm just going to go into a solo battle with uh, the AI, except I'm not going to add an AI player because I want to show you in my own time and I don't want to be rushed. Um, so first of all, we need to pick a civilization. So civilizations are, there's many of them. Um, some of them are not available in the base game. So for example, the Byzantines, the Japanese, the Ayyubids, the Jushi Legacy, Jean d'Arc, Order of the Dragon are all part of a DLC, but the rest are usable and in the base game. So I'm gonna pick the English because they're the easiest to play as, uh, as well as the French. They're the two easiest players to play as. They do two different, they're kind of different styles but both of them are very easy. So you'll see on the top right hand side of the English, they've got a difficulty of one star. Whereas like, for example, if you look at the Delhi Sultanate, they have a difficulty of three star. And that's because they uh, take a little bit longer to learn and how to use them correctly. Um, but really they're not that difficult. So let's go to the English and let's see how we go. Right, so we've picked the English. Um, First of all, we can pick a team. We don't need a team. And we can also pick a color if we want. I'm going to just click red because the English are red. So that's the overview. It's kind of giving us some details about how what these options have been selected. We've got different modes. We've got standard, Empire Wars, Nomad, Sandbox Scenario. Simply standard is what you would play on ranked online. Empire Wars is like a little bit further advanced. It's where like most of it's already been done for you. Nomad is where everything hasn't been done for you. So it's either like a bit further behind than standard. So you need to build your own town center, for example. Sandbox, there's no conditions. And scenario is you can create your own stuff. You create your own conditions and things like that. These are your win conditions. Uh, Landmarks, Sacred and Wonder, we'll cover them in a minute. Tuning pack is to do with mods and match options is where you can upgrade um, how much resources you have, uh, display player scores, and when you get eliminated, um, reveal the fog of war. Simple as that. And then the map is quite simply just a map. You just pick the map you want. I always go for Dry Arabia when I'm using a sandbox or in a skirmish because I just want to kind of focus on my build and not have to worry about terrain. Um, and then you've got some options here around the map. So the biome, for example, is um, based purely on visual. There's nothing to do with the game. As you can see, it just controls the appearance. So it doesn't change the resources or anything like that. So let's get into the game and let's cover the basics. Okay, so when the game first loads up, you'll see uh, your town center with some villagers and a scout and some sheep. And really simply, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna um, quickly, as fast as you can, because this is obviously timed because you're playing against an opponent, to kind of see where your starting resources are. So for example, we've got gold over here, we've got berries over here, and we've got stone down here. And then we kind of wanna see where we are on the map. So you can see here, we're kind of at the bottom edge in the middle. Now, this isn't so bad on one-on-one. -on -one. You, you'll know that your opponent will be here. But if you're playing in like a team game, for example, you want to make sure that you're like either in a corner, uh, your team is like quite close, that sort of thing. So we won't worry about that too much. Now, the town center, if you click on it, it exerts an influence. So you see this influence around the outside. That is simply how far the town center can see. So if an enemy comes into this uh, like area, the town center will shoot at it. Simple as that. And also the, in certain civilization, there's an influence uh, that is exerted from the town center and buildings placed in that influence will um, gain bonuses. For example, the Holy Roman Empire uh, have an emergency repairs. So if they're inside the influence of a town center, you can hit that button and the uh, building will repair itself really quickly, for example. And then you can see here, there's network of castles, which is where enemies are nearby. This building sounds an alarm, causing nearby units to get a 20% increase to attack speed. So it's really good. So if you've got enemies crushing you you can like kind of set your enemies inside this zone and they attack faster which means that you're more likely to win so let's just go through the town center building and what it does so you've got here you've got your hit points so this town center has 7,000 hit points it has uh zero uh armor um to like fire and and stuff like that which is exactly how you destroy this building with fire it's got 50 um, ranged armor. So if you hit it with an arrow, it can defend itself. And it's got eight attack. So if you it attacks you, it hits you with eight hit points a time. 
as simple as that and if you hover over it you'll get some more details about it so it's got like say 50 armor versus range zero versus everything else attack it has eight bow times two so it shoots two arrows at once and it has a plus 10 attack bonus to ships a tile range of eight so it will go eight tiles out and it has an attack speed of 1.88 seconds simple as that and also it has a maximum population of 10 so what happens is every time you build a town center it increases your population by 10. this is your population as you can see again if you hover over it it tells you how many of your population you have so you've got an economy of six which is your villagers and a military of one which is your scout to the right of it is your idle villager button so if i click it it will click an idle villager if i select all of them which I can't remember the key binding for this, uh, but for me it's F1 because I've set it that way. Oh, I do know what it is. It's control and full stop or control and period if you're American. Um, and that will select all your idle villagers and then you can use them, for example. If you run out of gold, for example, you can use them to move on to the next gold node, that sort of thing. So underneath it, we have uh, resources. So very simply food, wood, gold, and stone and the more you collect the bigger it will be and on the right is the number of villagers that are working on that then um underneath we have the villager button so if i click a villager it will give you again the base details about the villager how much uh, attack and health they have but then we have some menu options here and this is how you probably use the majority of the game will be in this screen uh, this screen and this screen probably to be honest so here you can see that we've got some options. This is our villager options. So this is what the villager can do. Attack, repair, stop, garrison, seek shelter, stand their ground and delete them. And they can also um, build a landmark building. Then they have the building options because villager is what you use to build buildings. So you've got age one, age two, three and four. And these are your um, building options that you would select as you go along. So for example, if I press Q, it would open up the uh, age one buildings. And if I pressed any of those uh, letters here, you'd be able to build one of these buildings right here. So remember those hotkeys because you'll use them a lot. So for example, if I wanted to build lots of houses, I'd go QQ and then I'd be there. For example, QQ and there. If I wanted to build a mill, I'd go QW and I'm there. QE, QR and so on. Town Center, uh, again, has very similar options, again, where you can build stuff. So, for example, you can build your villages here, you can build scouts here, and you can ring the town bell to bring everybody in. And it kind of gives you a, a visual representation of what the next age is going to be. So, how do we do this? So, what do we do? How do we play the game? So, really simple. Um, what you want to do first off is you want to get your scout, and you want to send him off to find, um, basically, find land, show, uh, show you the map, and find sheep that's basically their job and to find the opponent so you know where they are so what you can do is you can just click anywhere with a right click and it will go to that location if you hold left shift and right click it will give you a uh i don't know what the word is here it's like a, a queued up order and then what i can do is i can go q q q q and q and then what it does is it draws a path and the scout will just follow that path. And that's what I tend to do in my online games. I do a quick circuit around my base. And then I'll do a quick circuit around their base. And try and pick up as many sheep as possible. And what you want to do is try to bring as many sheep back as you can. So that you don't have to transition to other means of gathering food just so early. Now, while that's happening, we want to queue up some villagers. So we're going to press Q to make some villagers. And we're going to try and build as many villagers as we can. And I, what I suggest is to always build villagers, no matter what. So every time you are trying to um, build a villager, you're going to have to click on the town center and queue up a villager. Now, what you want to do is you probably want to do that off screen. So like, for example, if I'm looking at the scout, I want to be able to queue up a villager by going into the town center and doing that. But I can't do that because I'll have to keep going back and clicking it. So what can we do? Well, we can actually add it to a group. So you see here, I just added it to a group. To do that, you just do control and one or two, three, four, whatever, how many control groups you have. And if I click at control one, if I'm away from the screen and I click one, it will take me back to the town center. And what it will do as well is if I'm, for example, I'm looking at this guy here and I click one, it's gonna open up the town center without me. So if I double click it, it will go back. But if I'm just selected on a unit and click one, it will open the, the, the town center screen. So it's as simple as that. So what I can do then is I can queue up my villagers 
for example, like that. And then I can then have the villagers building while I'm doing other things, for example, like what I'm doing just now. And it's as simple as that. Now, while the villagers are building, they will come out and they will just sit here doing nothing. So what I want to do is I want to garrison them or rally them, sorry, to a certain place. So, for example, as you see here, they are now sitting there just doing nothing. But if you click on a resource with the G button, so you press G and click on the resource, they will, when they come out, they will move to that position. So we'll see that in a second. So watch this. But there you go. And they start walking off to the gold. Now, gathering resources is fine. And that's all great. But this is, if once he's got 10 gold, he's going to have to walk all the way back to the town center to drop it off. And we don't want that. We want to optimize this as much as possible. So we're going to take this villager to build a mining camp. So if I press Q and then R, we can build a mining camp over here. And what's going to happen is next time, once this is built, he gathers 10 gold. He's just going to drop it off here. And that's going to add it to the stockpile, but not have to go all the way back to the town center. So it's really helpful. And now, what you can also see here is the population is full. So we need to build a house. Yeah, yeah. So again, we just Q and Q, and then we can build a house. And then that will allow us to keep building more villagers over time. Now, yeah. let's use these villagers to gather food. And let's bring these sheep over here. And let's send the scout back out again. Using the same technique we just did. What we can also do is we can use the scout on two. So we could watch the scout. For example and then while we're watching him we can queue up some like villagers and then we can come back to the scout and watch where they're going because you probably want to watch the scout at the start because you want to see where the sheep are because sometimes they miss them they like walk past them and the sheep like don't quite get in their range so you kind of want to watch the sheep a little bit um don't worry about animals on the map they don't attack the scout um they do attack villagers but not scouts so for example we'll pick the sheep up sheep up because it's going to be inside the range there you go this sheep, maybe not. So if we watch it, will it get picked up? Oh, it will. Okay, so it's just in range. That was good. So that's what's going to happen. So you want to watch the scout and then keep building villages with the um, town centre. So they're building food. They're building gold. This guy's going to go back to gold. You can see here we're building um, villages. Sorry, we're putting villages on the resources and we're getting some resources per minute. And the more villages we have on the resource, the more we'll get. So you can see 240 a minute right now, 130 a minute, which is okay to start with, but we probably want to get a lot more. So we want to just keep building villages. And you see here, we've got now six on there, six on there. Let's, let's put them onto the wood. So if we do a, uh, a rally using the G button onto the wood, the next villager will go out onto the wood. Now, as this is quite close to the town center, I wouldn't build anything here to drop off resources i would just let them do that but when we go over here we will for sure so that's cool so basically what we're doing now is we're just waiting really to start with the early game is about watching the scout picking up all the sheep you can find um i don't think he missed any did he no i don't look like it picking up all the sheep you can find and then um when we get to 400 got food and 200 gold we can then build our first landmark but let's let them build up their food and we'll see what happens. So I'm just going to watch the scout for a second just to make sure we cover it all off. Yes, sir. Okay. So always keep making sure you're building those villagers because they will run out eventually and then you'll have to uh, re queue them up. So you want to try and avoid that as much as possible. And there we go. We've got quite a few units now on the wood as well. So this is uh, providing us with a lot of good income for our resources so i'm just gonna for this purposes of this video i'm just gonna put everything could put six on everything and then um just show you but in like an online game for example you wouldn't do this like you would do a certain tactic for each civilization so this is good so he's coming back with a couple more sheep which is nice so what i'm gonna do now is i'm just gonna select him to come over here okay so we're just waiting for that one more villager then we're going to go on to the stone as well after that. And that's as simple as that. We're just now waiting for the 400, so it will just take a little while, but we will get there. Okay. So let's put a, uh, a rally order now onto the stone. 
and let's build ourselves those six villagers. Now what you're going to see is we're going to get to 20 in a second, so we're going to have to have somebody build another house, so Q and Q, and then they're going to build that house for us. And now they're about to run out of this uh, piece of wood, and they would I would naturally go to here, but what I'm going to do just for the purpose of this video is to show you what happens when you build a lumber camp. So I'm going to build over here, and if I press shift and click, it's going to make it a um, queued order. Shift and right click, queued order, like that. And what's going to happen, and once that's built, they're going to start working on this tree here. So it's really useful if you've got want to build like 10, 10 houses in one go, you can queue them all up by using the shift button. So that's really useful. Okay, so everything is going to plan. So now the lumber camp is built, they're going to start putting stuff into that lumber camp. So they haven't got to travel all the way to the town center. Now, if we highlight over the lumber camp and the mining camp, we can see that, for example, the mining camp has a, a uh, something you can actually build, which is a upgrade. And there's three upgrades for the mining camp, which happen in every age. So feudal age, castle age, imperial age. And we can then upgrade the gathering rate of gold and stone. The same happens for lumber camp, which increases the gathering weight of, rate of wood. But also the rate at which the villagers chop down trees can be done in the first stage as well. So that's an interesting one to have. There is uh, another resource building called the mill, which we will show as well in a minute. But apart from that, that's that's it for the feudal age, for the dark age. There's not much else to do. So now you can see here we've got 400 wood, 200 gold. Our number one at the top has now become gold. What this means is that we can now build our first landmark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these guys and click on the landmark button. And then we'll get two options. We can either build the Council Hall or the Abbey of Kings. Now this is uh, English only. Every civilization has their own landmarks. But for example, the, they, they do different things. So Council Hall is an archery range and the Abbey of Kings is a religious building and it heals um, friendly units, for example. So it depends on the way you're playing. So if you want to play a, a, a kind of like more attacking style, you would go to the left. More defensive style, you would go to the right, for example, in this scenario. So let's just build this building. We can change them in, out of the menu by using Q and W if we want to. So that's the, the, the kit abbey. That's the, the council hall. So I'm just going to build the council hall just there. And what it does is it, so these villagers will go and they'll start working on it. It's going to take a while. It, it's not quick to build a landmark. It does take a little while, so you have to let it go and kind of let it run. Okay, so once it's done, you'll see this option pop up here. It says a new age begins, and your buildings will slightly change um, like appearance. And what you can do now, is, for example, each landmark has their own special abilities. For this one, for example, we can build archer units. Um, and what you can do again is you can just rally, build some units, and let them just congregate over here and now what you can do now is if you're in the second age one you can finally start building your upgrades so you could get the specialized pick you could get the broad double broad axe and these guys need to build a mining camp when they get enough enough wood so let's just put one down there um and then for example you can start just upgrading your resource potential but also you can start to build the, the rank 2 buildings or the age 2 buildings so we could build a blacksmith another town center archery ranges stables markets and stone walls and towers and again h3 would have more buildings and then h4 would have more buildings as well so you just work your way now up to the age the third age which is 1200 food and 600 gold so that will take you a little while and then I'm just going to build another house here just because we run out of village account. And then what you want to do overall is you just want to keep building up the food and building up the wood and gold and the stone until you've got enough to be able to build all your units that you need to go and defeat the enemy. Simple as that. Now, the late game, you're going to run out of sheep. Um, so you're going to have to change your resource to something else. Obviously, I've got one sheep here that I can use. But... We've got a couple of options. We can either use the berry bushes. They don't last very long. And um, we can put a mill next to them to get some influence on that. Um, or we could build a farm. So if I, for example, built a mill just this, uh, let me just 
double check the gap spacing i'll tell you why in a second if we go into the mill and create the mill you'll see that we have the option to do some upgrades which is great so these four are standard this one on the bottom is english only um but these are all standard ones so for example wheelbarrow increases the speed of the villagers uh horticulture increases their gather rate survival techniques increases the hunted meat gathering rate which is uh, there are some deer on the map that you can use as well um and then the last one is scout can also carry animal and have 100 percent plus damage um but they do move slower so once you put your uh, mill up we can start to create farms so I can put farm. Oh, that did not work the way I wanted it to work. Right, so let's do that properly. There we go. So we can start building farms. Now farms, um, they have, as English, have an influence boost because um, they're next to a mill. But that's not the same for every um, civilization. But your villagers will then just use these farms and they never run out. So you can just, at the end of the game when you're starting to run out of resources everywhere for food you can just put these down and gather food uh it is a bit slower than like berries and stuff but it lasts a lot longer obviously so it's good to use and once all the villagers are in their positions they're gathering food we can start to build our military units so for example i've got here my longbows um, and what they have is a very good range. For example, this is the English's special unit. And you see they can shoot from far away. Really quite easy. And then you can also build uh, barracks, which can make your spearmen and your men at arms. You can create a dock, which creates all your ships. Archery range themselves, so you can make longbows, crossbows, and uh, hand cannons as English. Um, longbows change to archers with other nations. And then stable is the horseman, knight, and scout and uh, that's quite straightforward and then when you get further up in the tiers you've got your castle age units which are all your siege equipment so you're like mangonels and battering rams and things like that and then eventually when you get to the imperial age you'll be able to use the imperial units so the imperial units are for example like um uh hand cannoneers and your bombards and the rubalquin as well or rubalquin i can't remember how you pronounce it and then finally, uh, right at the end of the game, if you still can't beat your opponent, but you've got so many resources, then you can build a wonder. And a wonder is a cathedral uh, for English, and uh, like a, it's usually like a religious building, to be honest. Um, and once you place it down, it gives you 10 minutes of... I think it's 10 minutes. I can't remember the top of my head now. 10 minutes uh, for the opponent to destroy it. Unless, and if they don't, you win the game. Simple as that. So it's a way to finish the game off without having to actually beat your unit. And that's one of the victory conditions. So we'll cover victory conditions really quickly, like I said. So the first one is to destroy your opponent. So you just destroy all their landmarks. Second one is to build a wonder and win by running the wonder timer down. And then finally, it's to uh, win the game as well. There is these um, kind of like shrine areas. Uh, they're called sacred sites. So like you basically take your priest and you put a priest on each one of these and when you control three it gives you a timer of 10 minutes and then after 10 minutes if the opponent hasn't got uh taken one of the sites down it's like capture the flag i suppose um you win simple as that so that's the beginner's guide i hope you enjoyed that i hope you um gained some sort of like good insight from that it's very very simple um in the next videos we'll cover more in depth about the civilizations and what you would do and how you would build them up and then we'll go from there. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think about this video. If you um, gained some knowledge. And if there's anything I've missed. Please let me know as well. Um, and that would be greatly appreciated. So thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.